exclusive, Harry and Meghan are pictured together for the first time since Megxit. Royal couple are all smiles carrying their own bags off a commercial flight in Canada without Archie after U.S. trip. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were spotted together for the first time since Megxit as they stepped off a plane in Canada on Valentine's Day. Pictures obtained exclusively by DailyMail.com showed the royal couple were all smiles carrying their own bags as they landed in Canada minus baby Archie after taking a flight from the U.S. They touched down at Victoria Airport at around 4.45 p.m. Friday, with what appeared to be a small group of security. The couple chose to take a commercial flight this time, having previously been slammed for preaching about saving the planet and then flying around the world by private jet. Meghan also opted for a Nico-friendly outfit for the flight. The Duchess, who led the way out of the plane with her husband following closely behind, was wearing a striped shirt, black cardigan, jeans and black pumps and her hair was loose around her neck. She was carrying a bag over her shoulder with a bulky grey sweater tucked into the strap and clutching a Prada duffel bag. Her $125 black pumps are from Rothy's, a San Francisco-based company that turns recycled water bottles into shoes. Fashion Bible Vogue has even dubbed the footwear as among the most politically correct shoes on our beleaguered planet. Meanwhile, the $1,790 duffel bag comes from Prada's Re Nylon line, which uses a can, a material that can allegedly be recycled indefinitely. It is made from mixing ocean waste and textile waste into fabric. Her shirt is from Mishianu, the US-based British Bahraini fashion designer and Meghan's close friend. Meanwhile, Harry looked casual in a grey sweater, jeans and a baseball cap. In a departure from their royal ways, the couple carried their cabin bags off the flight. Meghan looked like she meant business, with what appeared to be a black leather laptop case or portfolio tucked underneath her arm. The couple were presumed to be in the States for business meetings as they looked to break away from the royal family and start making money independent of the crown. Judging by their smiles as they walked along down the plane steps and onto the tarmac it seems their business trip was a success. The couple appeared to have left behind the turmoil of recent weeks as they beamed at one another and at their small roster of staff. There was no sign of baby Archie, who is thought to be being looked after in their $14 million Canadian hideaway while the couple set to work carving out new business ventures. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have been in the U.S. since last week when they made their first public appearance as a couple since their shock announcement that they were taking a step back from royal duties and leaving life in the U.K. behind. The pair visited luxury five-star Hotel One Hotel South Beach and Miami for the J.P. Morgan Summit on February 6, where Harry gave a keynote speech to the crowd. During his speech, Harry told American bankers he has been in therapy for seven years to cope with the loss of his mother. An expert estimated the couple would have been paid up to $1 million to appear at the star-studded bash. It is not clear how Harry and Meghan traveled to Florida for the event. J.P. Morgan's private Gulfstream jet had flown to Vancouver Airport in Canada, near to where the couple have been living since quitting royal life. It then left at 12.10 p.m. Wednesday and landed in Palm Beach at 8.03 p.m. Harry and Meghan stayed at Serena Williams' home in Palm Beach during the appearance. It is unclear if they were on that jet. Palm Beach is around 80 miles north of Miami. After the J.P. Morgan bash, the couple then paid a visit to the prestigious Stanford University in Palo Alto, California, on Tuesday, according to royal sources. As reported by The Today Show, Harry, 35, and Meghan, 38, are said to have attended brainstorming sessions with several professors and academics from the university, who have been helping them to work on the concept and creation of their new charitable organization. When the couple first announced their plans to step back from senior royal life they made mention of their plans to launch a new charity writing on their website that their decision to split their time between North America and the UK would help them in this endeavor. This geographic balance will enable us to raise our son with an appreciation for the royal tradition into which he was born, while also providing our family with the space to focus on the next chapter, including the launch of our new charitable entity, they wrote. 
it is unclear what role the Stanford professors and academics have within this new entity, nor have Harry and Meghan made clear exactly what cause, or causes, the organization will focus on. The couple's pursuit of future business ventures has been mired in controversy to date. They were criticized when footage emerged in January of the Duchess joking that she had attended the premiere of The Lion King to pitch for work. Then, on Thursday, Mail Online revealed that Prince Harry's team held talks with controversial investment bank Goldman Sachs back in November, when the couple were holed up in a Vancouver mansion with Archie and decided they would be quitting as senior royals. Their decision to work with academics this week at a university in California will no doubt raise more questions about whether the couple plans to relocate to the West Coast permanently. On Wednesday, DailyMail.com exclusively reported that Harry and Meghan are still weighing up their options as far as their decision to settle down, with Malibu, New York City, and Vancouver all in the running as potential home bases. Meghan's mother Doria lives in Los Angeles a six-hour drive away from Stanford, a possible factor in their decision. While the Duke and Duchess appear at content as they step down in Canada on Friday, their staff may be less so, after DailyMail.com this week revealed they were given their marching orders. The couple are in the process of closing their Buckingham Palace office and axing their hugely experienced 15-strong team of London-based staff. Almost all major decisions and certainly their social media strategy, are now being made by the couple themselves and a coterie of U.S. celebrity agents and publicists. Insiders have told the Mail that the couple's decision to hire a meddling group of celebrity U.S.-based agents and publicists has made life difficult for their palace staff. The couple have been organizing private engagements and briefings with their new team, and even hired a Canadian designer to create a new website without any involvement from royal advisors. The Mail understands that following Megxit, a small team of people will be employed privately in London to mastermind Harry's new eco-friendly travel initiative, Travelist. It is thought the rest of the redundancies will be concluded by the spring, when Harry and Meghan's transition in stepping down as senior royals is formally concluded. This increasingly fractious separation comes as royal aides were reportedly left cringing this week after the Duchess of Sussex posted a behind-the-scenes video from her Vogue magazine editorship showing her putting on a silly hat and playing with a party blower. Meghan and Harry uploaded the clip to their Sussex royal Instagram feed to celebrate the fact that the Forces for Change edition in August was the magazine's best-selling issue of the decade. The Mail understands that Meghan and British Vogue editor Edward Enenfell had been keen to put the video out since last summer but had been advised by palace officials because it was seen to be too inane and frivolous. They feared the image of Meghan wearing a party hat with a blower in her mouth could come back to haunt her, and could even be made into a Megxit meme, a humorous viral picture. Final snub? Meghan could skip last appearance as working royal despite Queen invite. Meghan Markle could dramatically snub the Queen's personal invitation to her last appearance as a senior member of the royal family, according to Buckingham Palace insiders. The Duchess of Sussex has still not confirmed her appearance for the last two events as working members of the royal family before she steps back. In an astonishing revelation, Meghan Markle has apparently not told Buckingham Palace whether or not she will attend the two senior royal events in London next month. Prince Harry and his wife Meghan are expected to return to the UK for the first time since Megxit. Prince Harry will attend the Mountbatten Festival of Music at the Royal Albert Hall before joining the Queen at the annual Commonwealth Day service. However, according to ABC's Omid Scobie, there are still question marks over Meghan's attendance. The Queen had personally invited the couple to the Commonwealth service on March 10 at Westminster Abbey. Scobie said, we have heard from the palace that their final engagements as working members of the royal family will be taking place in early March. He continued, that will be an appearance at least by Harry at the Mountbatten Festival of Music at the Royal Albert Hall. This is the event that rally takes place over two nights, Harry and Meghan TBC will appear at this event. It will likely be poignant for Harry as he is not just giving up his role as a senior royal but he is also giving up his military honors. On March 10, we will see the couple, Prince Harry is confirmed, Meghan is expected to be by his side, 
at Westminster Abbey on Commonwealth Day. They both keep their roles as President and Vice President of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. That is hoped to be a meaningful final engagement for the couple, their last ever as senior royals. Buckingham Palace has refused to confirm who will attend the Commonwealth Day service. They said, members of the royal family have been invited to attend the Commonwealth Day service and the members attending will be announced nearer the time in the usual way. If the couple appear, it would be their first appearance with Prince William, Kate Middleton, and the rest of the royal family next month for the first time since Megxit. When pressed on specific members, a Buckingham Palace spokesperson told Insider they are giving no guidance on that at the moment. Thank you.